we're talking about and we're asking, do you accept Joe Rogan's apology? As you know, Joe Rogan, he's been getting called out for a lot of his anti-black rants for years. And he's been kind of getting a pass for it. And now there's some artists saying that they're going to take their music down just for for having him sit up here and spew anti-black racism all the time. Um, and India Ari, she was one of them. Shout out to our sister India. She said she's going to take her music down if y'all going to keep him up here with this anti-black rhetoric. And there were some people threatening to take their stuff down because of his anti um, back stuff. You know, that's another issue, but People are like, forget about the anti-vax stuff. What about the anti-black racism? Right? That's a very valid claim. And they posted a video of him just saying nigga repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. So Joe Rogan has apologized. He's apologized for going on those N-word rants. So to the family, I'm going to ask you guys, do you guys accept Joe Rogan's apology? I've seen a couple of black folks like, yeah, we rock with Joe Rogan. Okay. Now, I've I've taken issue with Joe Rogan and him platforming, giving platforms to, to a lot of these alt-right um, suspected white supremacists. He seems very friendly towards that that crowd. You know, that's, you know, I've had issues with that and I've called that out for years. If you look at my social media, I've been calling out his his affiliations with some of these alt-right figures. But let me hear from the family. How do y'all feel about that? Do you accept his apology? Let's try Minnesota Voice first. Then we're going to go to Craig James. And then, hold on. Hold on, Craig James. Come on, come on. Minnesota Voice, where are you? Then we'll go to Brennan. All right, so let's try one by one. Minnesota, where you at? Yeah, I'm in Minnesota. All right, what's on your mind, man? My mind is uh, that dude, they are giving him a lot of um, unnecessary free, free publicity. Right. First, to be honest with you, I appreciate his sister. That, uh, I think she put her song out, Tread in the Pool. People that have the leverage, the um, black artists, they are the ones that I can actually inflict uh, um, harm on him. You know, a lot of black rappers and all the rest of them, if they can pull their song. Personally, I don't care for his apology or what he has to say. I have never listened to him for one day. No offense to anybody, but um, that guy has no credibility. If anybody listened to him, I don't care for him. He, black people don't need his validation and his apology. He can go to hell. There you go. Good rant. Uh, let's try Craig. Thank you so much, brother. Craig, hop on, sir. AB say it's a bad word, man. Can't can't respect that. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you, Craig. Okay. That was very fast and to the point. All right, let's get Brendan. Brendan, turn your microphone on, sir. Yeah, I don't think that uh, he's credible in any way. He shouldn't be saying the N-word no matter what. There you go. All right. Thank you so much, Brendan. All right. Let's get some more folks in here. People are getting to the point. I, I like that. I like people getting to the point. Let's get Sir Ceremony. We'll get him. Then we'll get Miscegenation State. Then we'll get Lake Show. Then we get Yer Yerp. So let's try them. Sir Sarima. Let's get him first. Sarima. Sarima. Let's try it one more time, Sarima. Sarima, get your thing working. All right. Can't get it working. Got to get you out of here, bro. All right. Let's try um, miscegenation. Miscegenation, you can unmute your microphone and you can speak, miscegenation. Yo, Tariq. How's it going, man? Glad to be here. Um, good, good, good. Now, where are you calling from, sir? New York City. There you go. So how do you feel about the Joe Rogan situation? Yeah, I find it kind of bullshit. I could see apologizing for the Planet of the Apes comment, but otherwise he's mostly quoting Richard Pryor or uh, 
that or just some other conversation he's in. It's it, you know they, this has been around for like ten plus years. Republicans previously unearthed it. It feels like it's just trying to bring down a large dissident figure. Okay, but yeah, the Planet of the Apes thing. I I mean, you know, that's kind of you know that's that's a vile comment he made, and just even the context of it, it was vile all the way around. So, you know, yeah. there's some validity to the vileness of it. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. It's mostly it's like, why did this not come up sooner? I mean, Spotify, I'm sure, found this out already when they uh, brought him on for one hundred million dollars. Right. I guess because they put so much money behind them and people are like, look, if we're going to cancel folks or, or reprimand people like Whoopi Goldberg, which, you know, I, I see that because look, we've known about these rants for a long time. We've known about them. And I've had issues with, with, with Rogan and I'm all about free speech. I don't like to just say somebody should be canceled or their stuff should be removed because I'm a big person on free speech. And especially if you doing, if you do things in the context of comedy, I'm cool with that. I don't, if, if it's some racist shit in the context of comedy, Hey man, it make this shit funny. It better be funny. Um, but with Rogan, a lot of times he will platform a lot of these alt-right figures. And I've always had an issue with that. They, they're, they're normalizing some of these guys who, who pretty much have some very dangerous ideologies and rhetoric and, and, and narratives. So, you know, when it comes to us black people, if we say anything, even if it's not even malicious, all of a sudden we have to do the perp walk. They, they, they wheel us out. They like Nick Cannon. He said some things that weren't malicious, but they gave him the perp walk. And recently, Whoopi Goldberg, she made some comments that were hi- historically inaccurate, but they weren't malicious in any shape, form, or fashion. But they made her do the perp walk. So, I guess a lot of yeah, people. It's pretty are- grotesque, right? Honestly, uh, it would be great to have Whoopi Goldberg go on Joe Rogan or Nick Cannon. Um, if obviously, uh, Whoopi Goldberg and Nick Cannon said unflattering things about a particular group, which is probably the biggest reason why they were forced into this uh, you know, self-degradation of their uh, heavy-handed apologies. But what did Whoopi really say anything degrading about? No, that? she didn't. Actually, it was just perceived as such by that group, which is very sensitive, uh, and will you know, react very, very strongly to anything that could even. I don't even see how it can be construed as negative, except in their paranoia. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that was very unjust. And I'm not a you know Whoopi. I've, I've had a lot of criticisms of her, but the way they did Whoopi. I, that was very over the top. Um, I think they were just trying to make an, an, an example out of her to show other people, hey, if you get out of line, you see what we did to her, we'll do it to you. It's that type of thing. Because what she did it didn't warrant her being suspended and all that. But anyway. Not at all. It was perfectly fine, everything she said. Right. All right. But there you go. Thank you so much, brother. Let me get some more folks on here. Uh, all right. Let's get... Who else do I have waiting here? Who else do I have waiting here? Let's get... um. Let's get Jay. I get Jay on here. Jay has a Jerry curl. And then we'll get some other folks. We'll get Santi Malcolm. All right, let's get Jay. Jay with the Jerry curl. What's up, Jay? Turn your microphone on, Jay. Turn that microphone on, Jay. All right, we're waiting on Jay. We're waiting on Jay, and then we'll get, let's, while we're waiting on Jay, we'll get Santi. Santi, hop on, brother. Hey, what's good? What's good, Tariq? Um, what's up? I'm good, man. Think about this Joe Rogan thing, yeah? Like, I get it, but we should have a universal standard over when you can use the word or not if you're not a black person. Like, Yes, sir. So I, I got to get you off. Your phone is very janky, sir. Your phone was very, very janky. It sounded like you were calling from a phone booth in Al Jazeera somewhere, brother. Your phone was very, very janky. No disrespect. It was very hard to hear you. Jay, ready ready to give it a try, bro? Mm-hmm. All right, Jay right now is putting some leave-in conditioner in his curls right now, so Jay cannot get on the phone. Jay, 
put your leave-in conditioner in a little bit later. You're requested to speak. Uh, his hands are not available. He doesn't want to get his phone greasy with the leave-in conditioner. He has a handful of world of curls, and he don't want to put the his fingers on the phone. So, Jay, let me get you off here and remove you. All right, and we're going to get some other folks on here. Let's get um, um, DT, um, M. Zimba, and then Joshy next. All right, all right, so let's um, – DT. Yeah, what's going on, Tyree? What's up, brother? Where are you calling from, DT? I'm calling from North Carolina, man. There you go. What's on your mind, brother? Nah, you know, I I just think it's uh I just think it's a little complicated <laughs> with the whole Rogan thing, you know. It's uh I don't I, I haven't seen if he's had much like ill intent, but if he wants to prove that he's really sorry, he's gotta do more than just put out this apology video. So um Right. You know, that's that's my thoughts. And you know, I, I, I mean just to be honest with you, I'm 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 not FBA. Uh I'm I grew up around mostly FBA, but my family's from Africa, so I, uh, it, it, you know, my perspective, honestly, it, it doesn't always hurt me as much as I know it does for the rest of y'all, but I'm just giving you that right. context. Now, where, where in Africa are your family from? Uh, Ethiopia. Oh, okay, cool, cool. How long you been in the States? Bro? I was born, I was born in the States. First of my family born in the States. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just wanted to say, cause <clears> you know, I, I see you've had, uh, I see you've had some back and forth with some, uh, with some Africans over the past couple of weeks, especially in these Twitter spaces. And, uh, I, I like I, I understand like there are plenty of us in like in our community that do a lot of colorism type shit and they they like to attack FBAs. I saw that uh, that uh, lame ass dude from the Fresh and Fit podcast. I was talking shit about um, the Sudanese dude talking shit about black women and all that. And uh, yeah, I, I, I yeah. totally don't condone any of that type of stuff. I see it happening all the time, and uh, I, I'm fully uh, against that myself personally. I, I feel like. Uh, all of us need to learn how to, you know, how, how to uh, how to unite in, in better ways, and uh, that you know that we can like try to work towards like common solutions rather than attack each other. So, no doubt, no doubt. All right, man. Real talk, man. I appreciate you so much, brother. All right, let's get um, hey. let's get Joshy. Joshy. Oh, yo. What's up, Joshy? Yeah, I totally agree with what DT said. You know. Everybody's kind of got to stick together. Uh, I haven't really seen everything about Joe Rogan. I, I do listen to a lot of Joe Rogan. And, you know, it's kind of weird how all this is happening at once. You know, they're trying to just attack them from every attack vector that they can come with. And once one thing doesn't stick, another thing's coming. Yeah. And I'm sure yeah. transgender and, you know, misogyny and everything like that is next. Yeah. You know, and it's kind of just kind of like the playbook. It's how they did yeah. Dave Chappelle. It's how yeah. they do a lot of people. And when somebody's getting 11 million views, which is way surpassing the billion dollar mainstream media, it's kind of, you know, it's off putting to them. So, of course, they're going to want him out. Um, one thing I'd like to ask y'all is, did y'all know that Joe Rogan's wife and kids are black? I know, I know, and that don't mean anything. I'm very familiar with that. I think um, the wife used to be, um, was something. I think the wife used to be with the guy from H Town, the, the group H Town. I think the she has a daughter, and her dad is um, the guy who was in the group H Town, which is one of my favorite yeah. R&B. I'm, I'm familiar. I'm familiar with that, but that don't mean anything, though. No. Yeah, I know it doesn't mean anything, but also yeah. when you look at it, you know. If a if a compilation is posted out of context, I understand, and I also understand there's no room for saying that word. You know, even when I was in high school and they were reading my Man and the teacher was like, "Oh, you know, I'm about to say this word, and you know, it's a bad word, and you shouldn't say it, but I have to say it for the times and everything like that." You know, when when I hear that word, it always triggers me because you know, I'm not even black. I'm Mexican and white, but my stepson is black. Uh -huh. Um, so, you know, I, I, I feel that, you know, I totally understand that, but the way things are kind of taken out of context and everything like that, I feel like he, you're not given a fair shake. He's not really given a fair shake at it. And although but when you, but, when you say, but, but the planet of the apes though, I mean, he, 
the context was very clear about the Planet of the Apes thing, though, right? Yeah, but my thing is, have you ever fucked up in your life? Yeah. And my thing is, you probably fucked up maybe at least two times on social media itself compared to a guy who does a podcast every day for three hours. But let's be when it's able to be broadcast like that, you know, and I, I'm not, I'm not trying to defend what he said, just so you know. Yeah, I'm not I'm just saying that people thing, are Rogan, able to apologize and redeem themselves. Joe, Joe Rogan has a pattern. You know, he kind of has a pattern of bringing alt-right type of figures on his broadcast. I mean, he said a lot of stuff, you know, you know, not just the nigga stuff, but, you know, he sped into that white genocide of South Africa stuff. He said, a, he, he starts talking like a straight up and down all right, cat. If you listen to a lot of his stuff, so would you say that's a mistake? And he has a pattern of kind of talking like that. Some will say that this. Is- uh, honestly, mm-hmm. I believe that you were told to think that. And I've listened to Joe Rogan for the past three years, and you know, even when he lived in L.A., yeah, he has gotten some right views since he's moved to Texas. But you know, Joe Rogan's always stood with the black community, the LGBT community, you know, even the transgender community. He just wants things to be fair across the board. And, you know, I don't think that's too much to ask. You know, it's it's one thing if you're listening standing, to him for three years and you come standing to your with the, So standing with the black community is saying being around black folks is like planning of the damn apes. Is that standing with us? No, I, I'm, I, I'm not saying that. Okay. But I'm saying you, yeah. you can take one thing that somebody says and paint him as a villain instead of highlighting all the good things that he said. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. So uh like Jeffrey Dahmer, that's like well Jeffrey Dahmer, he liked pets. You know we gotta excuse all the bad things he did just because Yeah, but did. you can't take the most extreme that's like me saying, oh well, you know, Jeffrey Epstein uh did philanthropy and he funded a lot of charities. You know, it, it's not you it's not like that. You can't take the most extreme, you know, far out conclusion of it and put it to it. And, you know, if, if a man is man enough to step up and apologize and be like, yeah, you know, this was bad, this and that, you know, who who are you to say that you're perfect? Right. But it ain't about being perfect, though. You have a certain ideology. You have to understand if you have a certain ideology and you with a major corporation like Spotify and you get to do your ideology to billions of people and part of your ideology is to disparage a racial group by referring to them as planning other damn apes do you know is that is is that not what the mainstream media like cnn and msnbc and all them do i mean they've been doing it for the past 70 years or so I, i don't think they said being around black folks is the planet of the apes they haven't said that i mean I don't think they've said that. They've they've done something. No, things. but they they've promoted a party that has you know Donald Trump has done more for black people than Joe Biden has. Donald Trump did more for black people than Barack Obama has. And you might what, not what, what take that. Do? You might what, not what, take that. What did he but do that's for? Because you were told to. What did to what did the, what did Donald Trump do for black people, sir? Uh, I, I'm I, I can't list it off at the top of my head because that's that's a talking point. He didn't do anything for black people, sir. I'm black and I didn't get anything from Donald Trump. Well, and I'm, I'm not, white and I haven't got anything from Donald Trump. Right, so. but you said he did more things for black people than all these other groups, and you couldn't name them. So, sir, you no, just, I, I'm telling you that he did more for black people than Barack Obama, right, and, and Joe Biden. And I'm them. sure if like if if we then why if can't we wanted you, to have a conversation about it, and I wanted then, to look up. Then why can't you name what he did for black people, sir? That's just a talking point. Okay? That is just a talking point. Why can't you name that? Why can't you name that, sir? Why can't you name that? Go ahead. Okay. Can you name... Sir? Let's not, let's not, let's not, let's not get into this. Okay. Let's not. That, okay. So, uh, okay. So do not make a false claim that you cannot back up, sir. Don't do that. Okay. Can you, can you prove how my claim is false? Because you can't name what he did. That's, that's the proof. You can't name can, it. You can't can you name it. how my claim is false? 
because you cannot back up what you said in your own words. You said something and you can't even back it up. That's proof that it's false, sir. You understand? That- <laughs> That's proof that it's false. Is it regurgitating a talking point? And I can prove it because I'm black. I know other black people. I have a black family. I'm in the black community, and none of us got anything from Donald Trump. And I'm black. Okay. So you, as a a, a black person in a black community and a black family, what if if you're saying that my claim is false? What different did you receive from Barack Obama? Nothing. To say that my claim is false. We didn't get shit from Barack Obama. We didn't get nothing, okay. Barack Obama. Nothing. I never said we did got it, get anything from Barack Obama or the Democrats. I'm not a fan of the Democrats, and I'm not. I don't play the partisan bullshit. I don't. I'm not a part of any party. I don't like the Democrats nor the Republicans. Neither one of them can say they do anything for black people. So don't do that. You are very dishonest by saying. That. And I think you know you were dishonest. You were just hoping that I wouldn't know that you were dishonest. No, I, I, I'm not being dishonest. As I said, if we were able to sit down or, you know, take a moment out and I could come up with all the exact. I'm not going to sit here and spout it's out nothing. bullshit. It's nothing, nothing tangible. We didn't receive anything tangible from Donald Trump. Nothing, nothing or any what? of them. Nothing. We, we didn't receive anything. We just didn't. And that's just a talking point that they'll throw out there and some of the uh, MAGA people will run with it just because they heard it on Fox News or something. But it's just not true. So we, we don't like to do talking points. We like to do something right and exact. There's a lot of noise going on over there. What, what you, are you at work right now, bro? Do what? There's a lot of noise over there. Are you at work right now, sir? Oh, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm not at work. I'm oh. at home right now trying to get some stuff together but i okay. decided to hop on this because i saw the joe rogan thing right now and, let me ask you this you said you had a black stepchild so are you married to a black woman uh no she's a white woman and the dad is black oh interesting 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 um the dad where is he um i mean he lives like 15 miles away and uh he gets he gets the kid every other weekend. Okay. And it was kind of even hard to do that and you know it, it it he tried we tried to give it to him more and we tried to do every other week where he would spend more time with them and he was saying it was too much and we went to every other weekend and he was saying that was too much. So eventually we just had to go to court and get a court order cuz I mean I believe a kid. I believe a kid deserves to see their dad, and whether you have to be forced or not, you know that's kind of just my belief on it. You know, I didn't have my dad growing up, so I, you know, I feel like that's a major part of your life. So, right, yeah, and that's interesting. This child is growing up. This black child, guys. And how does the child right now? Is he, he does he live with you and the the, the mother? Yeah, he lives with us. Um, as I said, pretty much all the time beside every other weekend. What do you, uh, how do you teach this black child about systematic white supremacy? Because he's obviously growing up um, in, a, in a conservative household. So My thing is, I can teach my kid uh, that, you know, racism did exist. I'm not racist personally. There's a lot of people that aren't racist personally. You know, people might tell you that um, you're racist, you know, white people are racist or this person is going to be racist to you or this or that. But what really defines you is how you define yourself and how you, you know, move forward throughout life. You know, you can't be a victim your entire so life. You're not, so you teach that child that racism doesn't exist and racism was a thing. No, no, no. Racism does exist. But I'm saying not everything is racist. You know, uh, the, the, the problem I have with the Black Lives Matter movement which, you know, I agree, Black Lives Matter, you know, police brutality, that's a whole nother subject that we can go on. But um, pretty much what how I feel about it is, you know, a lot of people nowadays are told to think something just because they want to go along with the mainstream. And that's what Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you know, Everybody's what told, told what to what think, and nobody you? really wants to think individually. Okay. And 
I feel like that's a, a big part of our problem is because, you know, people will hear something and hear what somebody else has to say before they even are able to gather their own thoughts. Or maybe they've experienced something. Don't you believe that people experience systematic white supremacy? Mm, yes. At a certain level, yes, but I also feel like everybody is given the same opportunity in life, and it's really up to you if you tarnish that opportunity. You or Do you say you think that black people in America have been given the same opportunities as white people? Uh, yes. Not, not historically, okay. but my kid will be given the exact same opportunities as the next white kid that sits next to him in class. Really? And yes. And you know, the, the problem I have with this line of questioning is it's, it's, it's what you're told to think. And it's what you're told to, you know, try to make yourself, try to make your argument look better. But in all reality, it's, it's demeaning to not only, ask those questions but to think that about yourself like you're worth so much more and you know although there was a system with redlining this and that you know you don't have to be a victim to that you but choose a, to be a victim to that so you choose to be a victim to banks and lenders not giving you home loans and property based on race that's our choice we chose to have them do that to black people? Are, are they still doing that? Yes, they do. They still do it. They absolutely okay, so, so they should I absolutely do it to, right to I this see? day. They do it right now. They do it right this very minute. So should I sit here and complain and be like, oh, well, you know, uh, HBCUs, they, they mostly accept black people. I can't believe that. That's racist, this, that, and the other. Um, colleges are supposed to have a certain amount of, uh, you know, race mixture with black people and hispanic people and chinese people oh my god i'm such a victim that's not you know that's not how it works man you know because you HBCU, you, you, you create the opportunities that. that you create H hbcus don't do that sir hbcus do invite asians hispanics and other groups not just black people sir so hbcus that's not a good example they don't discriminate at all Everybody goes to an HBCU. The white people, foreigners, Mexicans, everybody. They they don't discriminate at HBCU, sir. But other schools they discriminated, and they still have an unwritten rule of discrimination at certain schools too. And the redlining and gentrification based on race and not allowing black people to own commercial property and certain real estate that's alive and well today sir do you acknowledge that turn the microphone on sir i cannot hear you there you go i acknowledge the fact that you know systematically if you look at the progression of the united states uh sorry i'm outside right now it's pretty fucking cold right right if you look at the progression of the United States, you know, it started and there was slavery and this and that. And black well, people were slavery. systematically put in that position. But keep... it's not about the position that you or your ancestors or this or that was put in. It's about the position that you put yourself in. Right. It's about the position you put yourself in. Yeah. Okay. So you're just supposed to make it happen and you stick your chest out and you say, hey, I'm going to make this happen regardless of the, the oppression and the hardships, right? Isn't that what I do? Aren't? Did you say you were Mexican? Yeah. Why'd your family flee Mexico? Uh, Not too sure. As I said, I didn't grow up with my dad. Okay, because yeah, you're over here. You're Mexican. That means somebody didn't stand up to the hardships over there. They buckled and they left. They just bounced. So that's not standing up and working hard. That's just fleeing. You 
threw in the towel and left. And they came over here and had anchor babies. So that's not a a positive option in order to build your society, sir. You, you feel what I'm saying? This is why it seems a little contradictory where you're giving this advice on how to just stick it out and there's opportunity and you make it and don't be a victim. And your dad was a victim and got the hell on out of there where he was victimized and came somewhere where black people built up a nation where he can thrive and have anchor babies and they can thrive. You understand? But, but I, as I said, does that mean that I'm a victim? Well, well, shit, you came over here and you're eating off foundation of black Americans. You're eating off the legacy of black people who built this nation, did not get compensated, and we still face anti-black racism and white supremacy. So how are you at liberty to say we should not be a victim? And we've been victimized. And you've eaten off of our victimization, sir. You personally, as a Mexican man. So are you saying that you're currently a victim? Right this very minute at 12.01 midnight, I'm a victim of white supremacy because systematic white supremacy still, not in the past, right this very minute, dominates all areas of activity. Everything it dominates. Sir, is there anything that systematic white supremacy does not dominate and control right this very minute, sir. And that's a question to you. Mm, I'm not sure. And, you know, I, I really don't feel like there's any way to sway your opinion on this because you feel so strongly about it. Because um, as a victim, I'm affected so strongly by systematic white supremacy. So when somebody tries so if to you're tell a victim, me, right? If you're such a, if you're a victim, why do you have 653 people on Twitter listening to you right now? Is that does that sound like a victim? To, like yes. just yes. just you having this platform? You know, if I went live right now and I would have maybe three people come and listen to me, right? Does that make me a victim? Or, no. You know, it, no. It, it, it's all about your mindset and everything. You know. That's a you can correlation. sit here and say that you're a victim, this and that, and I'm not. That correlation makes absolutely no sense, sir, with all due respect. What number of people listening to me at any given time has to do with me being victimized in a system of white supremacy? You turn your microphone on, sir. And, and speaking of this Twitter space, we had, had 30,000 people last week listening to we had a show, a, a space with 30,000 people. We broke records on this. So, yeah, I got a lot of people listen to me. Does that make me any less of a victim of white supremacy? Uh, yeah, I do feel like it does, because what How you're so? saying is that you're a you're a victim of white supremacy. So you get nothing out of it. And, you know, you're, think- you're not able to be as successful or be as this or be as that, you know, that victim mentality it's kind of it's kind of a mindset you know you you're not a victim if you're able to get 30,000 people on your call and able to listen to you I, I can promise you one thing dude you're not a victim and I'm not gonna like I could sit here and go back and forth with you all night but you're not gonna change your mind because you're so stuck on what you were told to think that you're unwilling to think for yourself and look at the actual So you're saying that my experiences as a victim of white supremacy are not valid. Turn your microphone on, sir. So you're invalidating my experiences. You're telling me that I'm not experiencing white supremacy. What I know I experience. I know what I've experienced now and my life. I've experienced systematic white supremacy. On all levels, if you're telling me that I have not. Okay, so does that mean I did too? No, because you're classified as white. But why not? Because I'm Mexican, and why do I not experience white supremacy at the same rate that you do? I understand that. Because you're classified as white. Because you're classified as white, sir. I'm half white, half Hispanic. Right. So am I just a half victim? 
you're oh. cla- there's infighting among different ethnic groups within white society, which is almost like a hazing process. But at the end of the day, you can both agree on practicing anti-black racism. There's anti-black racism in Mexico. I know how the black people there are treated. They're treated horribly by the white-skinned Mexicans. Isn't that true, sir? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not from Mexico. Okay. Well, you t- if you ever find your dad, ask him about it. But that systematic anti-black so racism... So my thing is, um, since Steph Curry is half white and half black, does right. that mean that he's not a victim of white supremacy? Or There's, is it because he's half black that makes him a victim? And you know, as well as I do, there is no such thing as a biracial person in the system of white supremacy. There's no such thing as half white. In systematic white, if you are a person mixed with black, there's no such thing as half white. And that's from the dominant white society's playbook. You're black. And in fact, they keep an eye on the biracial black people because they don't want them sneaking in those black genes. They're very sensitive about biracial black people. So that would mean that I'm a victim because I'm not full white and I'm Mexican, right? What's full white? I'm not full blooded white. I have Hispanic in my blood. I'm half Hispanic. Does that mean that I am a victim of white supremacy? You don't have black in you. You don't have identifiable. Okay, so it it only has to be black. You can't be Indian and be discriminated against you can't be chinese and be discriminated against it's only the black people that can get discriminated against right it's only black people who get anti-black racism from all of those different groups you've named they can all get on the same page when it comes to anti-black racism and then they'll get an honorary white status black people are the only ones who don't get an honorary white status we have well wouldn't that be the same with everything no Okay, no. so all groups have so agreed Chinese to practice people, anti-black racism. That's the Chinese difference. people. That is a race that can be discriminated by blacks, Mexicans, Koreans, Asian, or mm-hmm. Koreans and whites or Hispanics. Black, black people don't have the power to discriminate against Chinese people. We don't have anything to discriminate against them with. How they've been? What What are we going to discriminate against them with? You could do anything. No, we we don't Just have like the you're power. saying that you're discriminated against. Okay, right. and right. you're a victim. Right. You could do that to anybody and discriminate against them no, and make them a victim. No, you can't if you don't have the power to systematically do it. See, you can victimize a person when they're they're victimized when you can victimize them with impunity. That's what makes it bad. When you can do it with impunity. Now, if I, a black person can go out there and harm an Asian person, but that black person is going to be punished. So there is no systematic discrimination from a black person. So does that mean that there is systematic Chinese supremacy because they can, can, they can discriminate against white people with impunity? No, they cannot. In China? Not really, but... Well, they yeah, really, yeah, they, really. They don't discriminate against black, white people in China. White people are gods over there in China, man. Well, they I'm saying they, they, they can don't. they can discriminate against white people with impunity in China because it is a mostly Asian state. But you do know that parts of China was colonized by Britain, so that trumps all of that. And they still have the U.S. They got ships and military with guns pointed at them and making sure they're on their P's and Q's right this very minute. Okay, so so what you're telling me is today at, we'll say, 109, that's what it is for me, uh you're a victim living Uh in the grasp of white supremacy, Uh and you are actively discriminated against on a daily basis. Systematically. Absolutely. Okay, systematically systematically or actually? Like, are you actually discriminated against, you personally, on a daily uh, basis with system, everything that you do? System, systematically. 
systematically. It's a system. Okay, so a year a ago, I had I had bad credit. Right. And I, over the past year, I built up my credit. If a year ago, I was like, oh, well, the system is discriminating against me because I'm a Hispanic American and this and that. Does that make me a victim of white supremacy because I forgot to pay off my car note and got bad credit? No. No, it doesn't because I chose not it's to the take same. the victim mentality and I chose to do something about it that was positive instead of saying, oh, not I'm the, a victim and being so negative all the time. Not the and same. I decided to move forth with my life and not be like, oh, the banks are discriminating against me. This is discriminating against me. That's discriminating against me. Even though they might have been, I still push forward and put one foot in front of the other. Because when you're living with the victim you're mentality, white, dude. you cannot you're make white. it out. I'm you're Hispanic white. as well. You're white. Hispanic is still white. No, it is not. Are you fucking yes, crazy? Yes, it is. It is white. Okay. You're, you're, when you say you're, Hispanic... You're, you, 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 you can't what's be Hispanic? swayed in any way what's Hispanic? because you're never wrong and you're the victim of everything. What's Hispanic, sir? Hispanic. What is Hispanic? Hispanic uh-huh. is somebody with brown skin... From no. either Spain, listen, from either Spain Which or is Mexico Europe. that grew up Hispanic. So Spain my or thing Mexico? is, as I, as I was saying, there's no changing your mind because you're already a victim and you've already solidified yourself in that victimhood. So there's well, no changing the, your mind. So until the, the victimizers solidified that, sir, not just in my mind. The victimizers, which are the white supremacists. The white supremacists are victimizers. That's why I'm a victim, and it's not in my mind. I'm a victim of white supremacy. It is not in my mind, sir. Go ahead, unmute your mic. So, until you decide to make a positive change, and instead of looking at all the negative all the time, look at all the positive about, you know... Black people were freed. Segregation was bad. And yes, we un- we all understand that. You know, those are common truths now that were once looked at as lies. But we can all look at it now and agree, okay, that's a common truth. You know, that was wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. Redlining's wrong. You know, I'm, I, my thing is I'm not against you. I'm with you. But the only thing that I'm against is your victimhood mentality because that does nothing to lift you up and progress you so why don't you do anything or have any heat for the victimizers we've both acknowledged that i'm a victim but the system of white supremacy you have victimizers and other black people saying the same thing so are all black people lying sir turn your microphone on i'm not not saying that you're a victim you're Are, saying okay. that you're a victim, and I'm acknowledging what you're saying about you being a victim. And okay. what I'm telling I'm asking you, because I'm not going to let you run around with the conversation. My thing is, I'm, I would I'm, like for you to let me finish just because okay, you're but, the host. But, you keep I know my that, mind. but, sir, but I'm not going to let you run away from the question. I'm asking you specific questions, and then you're getting into talking points, which is what a lot of people do when. You want to ask about systematic white supremacy. Are all these black people saying what I'm saying, that we're being victimized? People protesting and marching around the damn country saying we are being victimized by a system. Are millions of black people lying, sir? That is my question to you. Here's my thing, man. If something happened... Okay, so... Say there was that guy that got shot in Arizona by a policeman and say, let's try this one more time. I asked you a question. You're, you're saying you're asking me questions and I'm trying to talk. You're not letting me. Talk. Are millions of black people lying about being victims of white supremacy? I'm not saying that they're lying. What I'm but, saying is, am I going to finish? You're going to have to get to the point, sir. I'm trying. You keep muting my fucking mic. 
because I'm not going to let you get into. No, you're muting my mic because you're hearing something you don't want to hear. I want you to answer the question. I'm trying. And it wasn't a trick question, sir. This wasn't a trick question. It's very to the point. Am I not trying? Sir, it's a yes or no question. Am I saying that they're lying? No, I'm not saying that they're lying. What I'm saying is we can all understand what wrongdoing is and what wrongdoing has been. We all understand that. My thing is, as of right now, you're not a victim. Black people probably have the most opportunity in America right now due to the Black Lives Matter movement and the movement that you're talking about. But my thing is, you're not a victim the, the victim mentality is what hurts you. You have to have a winner's mentality so that way you can implement those that change that you want to see in the world. So when white supremacists who work for the police force right now, and yeah. it's been proven that card-carrying white supremacists work for the police. The FBI has acknowledged this. Every other agency has acknowledged that white nationalists, card-carrying white nationalists, work for the police. In Los Angeles, where I live, they have white supremacist gangs in law enforcement, literally gangs, who have packs with each other on killing people and, and getting tattoos on after they kill people. This is documented. So when we encounter one of these suspected race soldiers, all black people have to do is keep a positive mindset? Is that what you're saying, sir? No, but even what I've said about the Joe Rogan you know, thing earlier, you can't take the most far out thing and try to compare it to make your point noticeable. So what you, are you saying, you, sir? My sir, thing is... My wait, thing is hold on, it, sir. I just told you, and I just, I just let you know, we live in a system now where there are people who are supposed to protect us, yeah. working in law enforcement all around the country. This is not just one or two cities. These are not just a couple of bad apples. You have white supremacists working in law enforcement yeah. who have a green light to kill black people with impunity. Are you saying we just should have a positive attitude about that? About that, no. And what I was saying, as I said earlier, we can all agree to the wrongdoings that have happened and that are happening. But as I said, the victimhood mentality is not the way to go about it. Okay. You have to... You, so, you, what meant? Okay, okay, well, let's roll with the victimhood mentality. Okay, when you have card-carrying white supremacists who are victimizers in an authoritative position over the lives of black people, what type of mindset should we have, sir? It shouldn't be one that's nice, but if you're also doing something that isn't breaking the law, I can understand, you know, with the, with, the, with the police killings and everything like that, I can understand the tendency to think that something bad is going to happen. When I get pulled... Hello? Okay, he bounced. Ladies and gentlemen, he bounced. He hung the phone up. I didn't hang up on him. He hung the, he hung the phone up. Sir, and I know you're still listening. The sad thing is, this guy has a black child in his home, and I feel for this black child. I seriously feel bad for this black child being raised in this man's household. I can only imagine my heart goes out to that black child being raised in this man's household. That's a very sad thing. This is why we get a lot of these kids abused. 
raised in households like that with these guys. He is a black child being raised in a white household with these people with these kind of views talking about white supremacy don't exist. This poor child. This poor kid, man. Let me get some more folks in here. Then let me get Jeff Dallas in, and then I'll get Basho. All right, let me get, let me see. All right, let's see. Let's do um, the, I, I think I had this guy on before. The Anarchist, I think I had you on before. Anarchist, hop on real quick, bro. Anarchist. Peace, Tariq. What's up, family? How are you, man? What's going on, fam? FBA, hey, what's on your mind? For life. All day, every day, baby. What's on your mind, man? Nothing, man. I'm just listening to how you break down these white supremacists, man. Um, no doubt. All right, like, let me get some more folks on, man. My brother, he just wanted to give a shout out. I got a lot of folks on here. All right, let's get Jeff Dallas in here. What's up, Jeff? I think you were on the other day, right, Jeff? Oh, Jeff, what happened to you, brother? Okay. All right, Jeff. Jeff Bounce. All right, let's get Basho on here. Basho, let's speak on it. Okay, hold on. The Josh guy. Okay, Josh, I think he wants to get back on. I want to add a speaker. Okay, Josh wants to get back on. I get you back on in a minute, Basho. But Josh hung up and he called back. So let's see what Basho. I mean, what's up, Josh? Yo. All right, what happened to you? I'm not sure. I don't know if... I, I really don't fucking know what happened. Okay. Okay, so... Man, like I said, man, the, the I have a lot of concern about the, the, the kid being raised in that household, man. See, and that's sad I really because ha- if you had a kid and I was concerned about how your kid was being raised, you would tell me to fuck off. So that's what I'm going to tell you is fuck off because no. you have no... I'm not no going to fuck off. No, 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 no. I'm not going to fuck off because I see black children being harmed in these white households all the damn time. And by the time people want to do something about it, it's too late. And I see black children being harmed with impunity and the signs are always there. I'm not going to fuck off because I look out for these black children. And when you have people raising these children with these dangerous mentalities, that is something to be concerned with, sir. So ain't nobody going to fuck off here. You're going to fuck off. And I want to know if these kids are going to be okay. Because y'all get to do whatever you need to do with these kids. Or do whatever you want to do with these kids. And nobody bats an eye. And the signs are always there. That's the sad thing. I have a major problem with black children being raised in white households because of systematic white supremacy. They get on code. The authorities get on code with you. Knowing that there's signs there and y'all can do anything y'all want to with these damn children and these kids have zero protection under a system of white supremacy. So I do have concerns. So ain't gonna be no fucking off here. I have concerns about that. And you sitting up here talking about ain't no white supremacy and a victim mentality and all that bullshit and you can get away with doing anything with these kids. So I, I do have a problem with that. Not saying you are going to do anything to the kid, but you have the ability to do whatever and the white supremacist authorities will be on code with you. That's a problem. So can I ask you a question? Yes, you can. Go ahead. Why is it that every time I'm trying to say something and I know that you don't want to hear it, I end up getting muted? Because you're not going to talk about fuck off when it comes to a black child that you're sitting up here probably indoctrinating talking about ain't no systematic racism and you're creating a victim right in your goddamn household and i have a problem with that okay so i have a major problem with that okay so my thing is when you're talking i'm not cutting you off but when i'm talking you have no issues because because you want to be the loudest in the room yeah, I'm, 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 I'm cutting you off because I'm not going to let you rant. When I ask a question, you have a tendency to just kind of go off and rant and deflect. And I want direct answers for the questions that I ask, sir. I want direct answers for my questions. Okay, you want direct answers. Yes, I do. To some kind of exam. It's not an exam. Really, it's, we, have, we should, I don't it want should be a you conversation. Talking. 
I don't want an exam. I just don't want you ranting and just giving empty talking points because those are deflections. If we're going to have these type of conversations, let's have these type of conversations. Well, I'd like for it to be a conversation, not you ask me something, I say something you don't want to hear, so you mute me. Right. I don't want to hear deflections. I'm an, I've, I've let you know. I don't want to hear deflections. I've let you know that from the beginning of the conversation. And if I ask you something and you start deflecting, sir, that's a form of practicing white supremacy because it's based on deception. White supremacy is all about being deceptive. So I don't want any type of deception here, sir. Is it? So, so, so am I a white supremacist? No, I suspect you could be, but I'm not saying you are. I suspect you could be, but I'm not saying you are. And when I see certain tactics that white supremacists use, then I have to stop you and say, hey, sir, we don't want you to do those type of victimizing tactics that's common among white supremacists. And I hope you are not one, especially when you're raising a black child in your household. I would really hope you're not one. But I don't know. This is why we're asking questions, trying to get to the bottom of this. You know, race of- you know what's so sad about you even thinking that is the fact that I've never met you man to man. You don't right. know who I am and you don't know how I live my life or how I choose to live my life. But yet you still have this preconceived notion because of your victimhood mentality that I'm a white supremacist or that I could be a white supremacist. Right. But, and you just but, told and, and what you did was invalidate my real life claims. I told you I was a physical victim of white supremacy and you used what we're calling the I'm white and I say so narrative and said, no, it's just in my mind. So that further makes me suspect that you could be a white supremacist. You understand? Okay, so you're labeling me a white supremacist. No, I suspect you could be. With, with, with no prior knowledge of who I am besides this conversation. Right. And you think that I'm indoctrinating my child because I don't believe exactly what you believe? You sat here and completely invalidated my claim. You've never met me. You told me that you never met me. That I'm not a victim of anything and it's in my mind. And you don't know anything about me. And if you can do that about me and you don't know me, what if that child comes home and says, hey, stepdad, some white kids at school called me a nigger and the teacher didn't do anything about it. What are you going to tell that kid? It's all in his mind? What are you no, gonna tell I would him? go up there and deal with it. Well, no, when it came to Joe Rogan, let's go back. Looking at your track record, you were like, well, hell, people make mistakes. When they practice anti-black racism, these are your words, sir. You said, well, hell, give him a chance. Everybody makes mistakes. Can he make a mistake? Well, what's the context of him saying nigger? So we've already known, we know what your stance on nigger is. If somebody says nigger, it might just be a mistake. Well, it, it might so you just must be a not have, context. You must not have heard me earlier. I, I heard you. I, I, I literally said, I understand that you shouldn't say that word. And it made me uncomfortable in high school when my teacher even said it when she was reading Of Mice and Men. You know, but that, it makes me uncomfortable when anybody says it. Like, that's what it does. But, but Gabe Joe what, I was, pass, sir. what I was saying and what I said, not what you are saying that I said. I'm sure everybody on this call heard exactly what I said exactly is that in the context that he was saying it, he wasn't saying it to be demeaning to black people. He was saying it as if, so. I'm not talking, look, I'm not talking about the Planet of the Apes thing, okay? I'm talking about the whole compilation of it. He was saying it not to be demeaning, but to be explanatory of what somebody else said or what somebody else was saying so oh. you sitting here saying you, you you literally just sat here and said oh well we know your thoughts about the n-word and we know you what do, are you not listening or do you listen to 
what you want to hear and you filter out everything else because um, you just said that I have a certain view on something when literally like 10, 15 minutes ago, I said the exact fucking opposite. No, you said pretty much what you said earlier. You kind so of can, you run, can, can you can, can you run this spaces back and listen to it? Because I would love for you to do that. And I would love for you to know that you were just proven wrong and you are literally filtering out everything that I said and trying to make it fit your narrative of me and who I am and what I think instead of actually looking at actually what I said, what I am and what I think. I've heard you give Joe Rogan a pass for his anti-black racism. And you said, well, the context, it depends on the context and certain okay, people. Okay, so Joe Rogan is racist. Very much so. Joe Reagan, Joe Rogan with his black wife and black kids is a racist. Very much so. Okay. You're what crazy you think, as shit, my man. You, you think having a black wife and a black child excuses racism, sir? No, I'm not saying that it makes him so, so how excuses him from that. Okay, have you, ever, ha, oh, wait, wait, Tyree, wait, Tyree, have you ever? Hold on, wait, 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 wait. Tyree, have you ever said the N word? Hold on, hold on. Yes, I have. I said have it all the time. Have you ever said the N word with the hard R, explaining what somebody said to you? Yeah. Does that make you racist, Tyreek? I cannot be a racist against myself, oh, sir. Oh, really? Who am I going to be I racist many against black me? people that are racist against black people. It, it don't work like that. You cannot. It doesn't. Oh. It, you can't be racist against yourself, sir. It don't work everybody, like that. Everybody else can be racist, but black people can't be racist, right? To ourselves? To anybody, Tyreek. We don't have a system of racism that black people exudes on people. We don't have that. We don't have a system where we can practice racism on people. We're, we don't have it. Y'all don't? No. Racism is a power dynamic, sir. So is reverse racism a thing or no? What, what's reverse racism? Explain that, sir. Um, black people making fun of white people. Yeah. That's uh, calling, black... calling somebody a name is the extent of so-called black racism. That's not systematic, and it's not something that is practiced as a group. You're trying to compare a black person calling somebody a name, and that's really what black racism is. That's what but reverse racism is, a black person calling somebody a name. You're comparing that to white society, mass incarcerating, gentrifying, miseducating, um, employment deprivation, judicial misconduct, and a whole system of oppression. You're trying to compare a name-calling session to systematic oppression, sir. Okay, so you said oppressing them as a group. So you believe that all people in the world who have any bit of white in their body are, are systematically racist against black people no because all white people are not white supremacists but the white supremacists are more powerful than the white people who are not racist and a white person practicing racism it's different from a black person calling them a, a racialized name you know why you know why it's different sir you why know, is because, that? because that white person has an entire army to back them up. So does and that mean that my teacher in high school, reading Mice and Men, uh -huh. given the context of saying the N-word, she mm -hmm. said it, okay? Yep. Does that make her racist, Tyreek? I don't know the context, and I don't think she is racist. I, I, to I told you, she was Just reading it way. of Mice and Men, and she said, okay, well, I'm going to have to say this word, just so you know it's a bad word, and, you know, it was... People use it during slavery times to demean black people, this, that, and the other. And then she said it. Okay, right. the fact that she said it, Okay. does that make her racist, Tyreek? Sir, first of all, nothing well, Answer my question. Answer nothing, my question. I don't know the teacher, sir. I don't know anything else besides... You don't know, you don't know Joe Rogan either. 
I don't I don't know. I do know nothing happened to that teacher. Nothing happened to her. She wasn't reprimanded or punished for that. So you're using oh. apples and oranges. Now, Joe Rogan, on the other hand, Joe Rogan has a pattern of doing things that are very anti-black. He has a whole pattern of doing this stuff. And anti-black, like yes. marrying a black woman and yes. loving her very much. That's very anti-black. Okay, that doesn't excuse anti-blackness. You Do you think you keep repeating that he has a black lover? Well, I'm saying so, you're you're saying sir, that he's anti-black. You, Wouldn't anti-black mean against the black? That don't mean Isn't that, that you the won't exact get definition of it. No, um, slave owners had black mistresses. Do you think they were pro-black? No, they weren't pro-black. Does that mean that they're anti-black? If they're a slave owner, yeah. If they're slave owner. And they have a black mistress. Does that mean that they're anti-black, which the definition of would be against black? Yeah. You know what? You're wrong, buddy. Okay, Thomas Jefferson. Do you think Thomas Jefferson? I don't fucking know anything about Thomas Jefferson. How fucking long ago was that? I'm telling you, Thomas Jefferson, president major slave owner had an infamous black woman who they call his mistress but she was a victim of white supremacy he was raping her named sally hemming had a mistress for years he was laying up with her had several children by sally hemming but he kept her enslaved and kept the children enslaved and thomas Jefferson wrote a book about how supreme the right white race was they call him the father of white supremacy he wrote a book talking about how inferior black people were so what does him laying up with a black person mean? So you're comparing Thomas Jefferson, uh huh, a, sl- a slave owner, a slave owner, yes, who was raping a black woman, yes, and had like many, with like her. many, like many of them did, yes, which was common okay. on plantations, yes. You're, you're comparing that, yes, to Joe Rogan, yes, who had two wives, yes, before his current wife, uh huh, who was black, yes, so. The comparison is Thomas Jefferson yes. raping a black woman, also yes. owning slaves, is the exact same as Joe Rogan laying up with a black woman and having kids with her willingly. Yeah. Even though slavery is not even a thing right now. Yes. With a capital Y. Yes, it's the same thing. Tyreek. It's the same thing. Tyree, look, be real with yourself for a second. Are you? Be real, man. Like, come on. That is the most asinine thing I've heard today. How so? Because you're literally comparing somebody who's a slave owner, uh huh, who was raping black women and mm-hmm. having kids with them, yes, to a white man in 2020, uh huh. Who has had two white wives before him? What's the difference? That he divorced. What's the difference? Um, well, let's let's think about this, Tyreek. Um, he doesn't own slaves. He's not raping his fucking wife, and she is will, will willfully consenting to a relationship with that man. Okay. So the only reason you're saying yes with the capital Y is because it fits your fucking narrative. Uh, so that is the most asinine thing I've heard. But you said a person who's anti-black. Year, but but you just said a person who's anti-black wouldn't lay up with a black person, and we both acknowledge that they will. They would do that in slavery. Slave owners laid up with black women all the time. So what okay. are you talking about? That destroyed your own narrative. So so that makes him anti-black because he was using the N-word in context of explaining. That makes him anti-black. Right? Sir. Not the fact that he's gave platforms to various black comedians, so, uh, so entrepreneurs, everything like that. That saying, makes him anti-black, calling, right? Calling black people planet of the damn apes. That's not anti-black, sir? Um, I, I feel like that is a very derogatory thing to say about people, and that shouldn't be said. But that doesn't make you anti-black 
in one statement. Really? I heard you say I heard you saying earlier, oh, this guy is indoctrinating his black kid and saying this and that and you know, this black kid is gonna grow up. Oh, poor black kid. Does that make you anti white, Tyreek? Very bad correlation. That didn't connect. Does sir. it make does it make you anti white, Tyreek? Horrible correlation. No, because you're saying that you're saying cor- that me as a white made, you're saying me as a white Your correlation made zero sense, sir. Very horrible correlation. That didn't connect at all. Now, sir, you sat here and you're making excuses for Joe Rogan calling black people the planet of the apes. You're sitting here making excuses for that. And you have a black child in your household, sir. Don't you see how problematic that is? Turn your microphone on. Uh, since we're talking slow like this, I literally just said that that's a very derogatory thing that shouldn't be said about black people. And but you said, it, it, it's very but, wrong. But you said it wasn't anti-black. All right. You well, I'm going to hop off this space because you keep muting me when yeah, I'm trying to not, talk. You're not going to talk over me. That's not what you're going to do, sir. And you've already shown us what you're really about, sir. You just said that Joe Rogan sitting here talking about nigga, 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 nigga. Well, it's just not in the right context. And him referring to the black community as the planet of the apes. Well, he just said it once. I mean, eh, that's problematic. You seem to make a lot of excuses for white supremacist anti-black behavior, sir, and that's why I have a problem with that black baby in your house. I have a real problem with that, and I hope that baby is going to be safe. What, Tyreek, why would he not be safe? He's my child. Sir, I've seen too many instances with the white stepdads around these black kids doing all types of foul things to them. So you're Not assuming. Cool. I'm assuming. Yes, I am. I'd rather be on the safe side than sorry. I hope that child is okay. I well, really- he's, he's very okay, and he's very well taken care of. And honestly, he's fucking five years old, Tyreek. He's not which, worried which, about racism. Which really worries me. Which really worries me. I'm not going to even front. I'm very worried about that baby. This black child in a house with you two white people talking this crazy, my heart goes out to that baby because that child is in danger. I really feel that that child is in danger being in that household. I honestly feel that, sir. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that you feel that way. I don't like that at all because nobody protects our babies. They get around y'all and you up here talking about ain't no racism and just because somebody's yelling nigga and calling folks the planet of the apes, that don't mean nothing. And that's uh, uh, these black babies sitting up there with you. Nobody's protecting that baby. Nobody's protecting these black children. They turn a blind eye. And I have a I have a major problem with that shit. I'm not going to even front with you, bro. Hey, Tyree. Problem. Sorry. Yes. So you you just went on something and you were saying that I was saying that it was okay that Joe Rogan said you sat I was trying to No This whole conversation, you've sat here and justified white supremacy. You've sat here and denied white supremacy. All of that is to maintain white supremacy. Justification of it and denial of it means you're trying to maintain it. And if you're trying to maintain white supremacy out here, that means you'll try to maintain it within your household. And you have a poor victim of white supremacy in that house with no sanctuary, with no protection. And I have a problem with that because you have a green light to harm that child and nothing is really going to happen to you. That's a problem. Tyree. Yes. Can I 
get a moment to speak without you muting me because you're hearing something you don't want? Because really, at this point, I don't want to hear you rant, and I'm seriously concerned about that child. Right now, my concern is that... My, my biggest concern is that baby up in that household, and you have the views you have. Very dangerous. It's very dangerous. It's very dangerous because I've seen too many train wrecks of relationships happen in that dynamic, and I don't like it. And it's only people like me and other brothers who know how to ride out when we see certain situations like that because the white authorities, they got this white supremacist code that they get on with you guys. When it's a black child being harmed, they all turn a blind eye. They do not help these black babies. And I, I just don't feel comfortable with that. Not saying you are. I'm not saying you are. I'm not saying you're doing anything. But, but you are. On, but based on your ideology, ah, it don't look good, man. It just don't look good. Okay, so I, I, can I get a moment to talk? Go ahead, man. Okay, so I just like to let everybody know in the spaces. Anytime I tried to defend myself, I was muted, and Tyreek went on a tangent about, oh, this black baby, this poor black baby. I never said that Joe Rogan saying Planet of the Apes was right. I literally said the opposite, and I hope that we can get a recording of this Voices okay. oh. and show. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. But okay, I don't want to hear this dude explain. Now he's I, okay. I don't want to bore you guys with this guy explaining. All right. We already know his ideology. All right, I took him off. Okay, family. I don't want to bore you guys now because now he's explaining. He's explaining. Now we know his ideology. He's one of these guys who's going to deny racism all around the board. It's a bunch of talking points. It, that would be one thing, but now when there's a kid in that house, I'm very concerned, man. I'm not going to even lie. I'm very concerned about the baby. Let me get some folks in here. Let me get um. Okay, who we got? Who's, who's Dana? What's up, Dana? Let me get Dana in here. Dana Alexander. Let me get Dana in here, and I get a couple of more folks on here. Dana, what's up, beloved? Turn your microphone on, Dana. Come on, Dana Alexander. Where's your microphone, Dana? I'm here. Sorry. In- I'm here. There you go. What's on your mind, Dana? Uh, you know what? I just want to thank you for having these discussions so openly. And it's just, I get so frustrated. It almost feels like, I hate to say it, but it's almost like a class. And it's that one kid who refuses to pick up the book, refuses to to do anything to actually learn about race and racism, I, I had a horrible, I have a, I'm, my mother is mixed race. And it was really crazy because it, it, somehow they think because they have a black child, they're married to a black person that somehow they are exempt. My mother was, literally, right. my mother was literally told that the only reason she was allowed to be alive is because the first abortion nearly uh, killed, <laughs> killed my grandmother. You know what I mean? Wow, so, wow. so listening to this is, I just feel like, I don't know how we're even going to move forward when we can't even agree that there's a problem. Right. Real talk. And that, Thank you so much, beloved. But but a lot of times, man, when these folks sit up here talking about, yeah, somebody ain't racist because they married a black person, man, have you, this week alone, I've seen stories of white women killing their black children. Man, yes. The, the white stepdad beating up black children down there in Texas. This sister had this white man up in her house, and he was just beating kids and beating the the, the, the stepchildren. Killed one of them recently. Yeah, I have a major problem with that. Major problem with that. Let's get some more folks in here. A lot of folks requesting right now. Let's see. Uh, I see you, Dr. Kimi. I'll get you on in a minute. Uh, let me get some new people on here. I see Dr. Kimi. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm thinking about the kid, man. That is a bummer. Thinking about a kid being raised in that household with this dude talking like that. That's a problem. 
All right, who do I? Let me get some folks on here. There were some sisters on here I wanted to get on. Okay, let's get um, let's, let's get Holland Oaks. Let's get him. Let's get Brother Holland Oaks. Let's get um, all right, raise your hand if you want to get on. And then let's get Kenny T. What's up, Holland? What stupid little name, man? Uh. Honestly, though, man, it is it is hard to uh, to combat this man when the goalposts move. It's easy to it's easy to 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 peel that crap down, man. I mean, firstly, with that whole Hispanic crap, you look on the you look on the, the census. What they ask you, Hispanic, white, Latino, or or are you a has a black or non black Latino? Like they already break it down in that way, right? So they already right. they already differentiate if if you're if you're white. Um, we call it uh, not passing, but you know that's what you identify as. Then secondly, yeah. then secondly, the goalpost move where you know people think that racism is you know uh, sitting sicking dogs on you, spraying water hoses and all that crap. And it's like no, it's more subtle. It's more it's more systematic. It's more sinister, right? right. And then they're like, oh, okay, well, well, nobody's yelling at you. Nobody's saying this or that. Then you get people like like you know a Rogan fan or whatever. But it's like, yo, you gonna say this fucked up shit? Like here, here it is proof from the pudding, and then they're like, um, "Yeah, no, it's not really racist. Uh, that's not. That's just tongue in cheek." And it's like, "Wait, wait a minute! Now the goalposts have moved again. First, you said you needed to hear right. it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, all nothing but explaining. They just keep explaining and explaining and explaining. It's boring. I right, thank you so much for the call, brother. Let's get Kenny T. Kenny T. Let's hop on, Miss Kenny T. Hi, Tyreek. Hi, Black family. This is Kenny. I'm from Tampa, Florida. Just listening to this, is it just makes me so mad. But uh, my Man. question is, I just want to know, do we have any organizations or does anybody know of anything that we can get behind when we have these kind of situations to, you know, help these children? Yeah, you know what? We, we got to start doing that. I, I, I used to put out a phone number and some emails for kids to you know, if you're in situations like that, you know, hit us up and we'll find somebody in the area to kind of help you out if you need some funds or if you just need to get away, if you need safety. Um, for, for babies that young, though, you know what I'm saying? It, yes, because like right years. now I'm trying to put together something to help not just to raise funds for these kind of situations, mostly for children who are trapped in foster system. But I would like to kind of, ex, you know, um, what do you call it? Expand what the funds yeah. would be used for. So if, if anybody knows any organizations to help these kids, then that's something that I think we need to kind of support on a grassroots because when these things happen, we need to be able to take action. Exactly, exactly. Thank you that's so much, all I have sister. to say. Thank you. Thank you. Family, we, let's put our brains together. Let's put our heads together and think of some ways that um, we can have an outreach network nationwide. And I've been talking about this for years and I've been semi doing some things that was, remember years ago, there was one sister that we actually helped in Atlanta. We actually got a sister who was an African sister, by the way, she was from Liberia and she was adopted by this white family in Atlanta and they were doing some funny style stuff. So we, I sent her money, got her a plane ticket and got her up out of there. Um, we have to do this on a on a bigger scale. Um, how can we implement something where we can help children in situations when they're with some weird step parents or some foster kids? I mean, they're in a foster situation where they're in danger because the problem is these black children, they know that these children are in danger. The state don't really do anything to help these black kids, especially when they're with white people. That's the problem. Now, if it was... Uh, black people, they punish black people. The minute a black folk, a black parent yells at a black kid, they, you know, they come in and swoop in on a black parent. But white parents, white people taking care of black kids, the system turns a blind eye. The police turns a blind eye. The, the, the whole system turns a blind eye when it's a white person raising black children and they're being abusive. Nothing is done until the damn kids are dead or half dead. So, family, what do we need to do? Let's put our thinking caps on. What can we do to create a network so that we can possibly help children in situations like that? 
we I, I need us to put our heads together because I've been I've been wanting to to put something together because every other week we keep seeing a story about some black kid that got beat up by their stepdad. They, they got a crazy stepmama that then drowned a black baby. Uh, we know about the Hart family, that tragedy. And those babies were dying for help, man. They were running to neighbors, begging for food, shit like that, man. I, that, that don't sit well with me at all. The Hart family, they were being abused by them racist ass white women. And the, the kids were sneaking away. They, they didn't have them in school. That's another thing. They isolate these black kids. They get these black kids and they, they homeschool them. So nobody knows what's going on. So, you know, I, I want to have something that some type of network, something that we can do um, where we can help kids all around the country in situations like this. Because the authorities, the so-called, they're not going to do shit. We're going to have to do something on a grassroots level. And I'm telling you, sometimes when I'm out, like at a state park or a state fair somewhere, and I see like a black kid or like a white family and some don't look right, I'm like, you know, kind of looking at the kid, giving a signal like, hey, man, you know, I'm trying to throw some telepathy or something at him. Like, hey, if you need something, if you are in danger, shit, blink or something. Sometimes you can see something wrong. I, I was at um, um, a little Halloween thing like a year or so ago, and I seen this um, old white couple, and they had like this black girl with her. And you know they always got the black kids dressed like the color purple or some shit. They got them dressed like pickaninnies and slaves. So that right there is a first sign. So I'm looking, man, like, damn, do I need to intervene? Do I need to go say something? So there, there's always these this weird relationship with these black kids that they have. And you can tell something is wrong. So I, I want us to create some type of network. So if we see something, we'll, shit, we can give these kids a card. Like, hey, there's a number and an email on this card. If you need, you know, keep that away from your stepmom or whatever. But if you need help, holler at us and, you know, you need money, food or whatever, something we can do. We just need to put our heads together and see what we can come up with, family. Let me get a couple of more people on here. Let's get Bruce on here. Bruce, let's get Bruce on here with the Batman photo. Bruce, hop on, bro. Hop on here, Bruce. Yeah, what's up, Bruce? All right, man. Um, honestly, I am a big fan of you. I do agree with a lot of the stuff that you say about um the yeah. Democrats not really caring about black people. Honestly, my thing is um yeah. honestly, I think as a whole, because I feel I'm not saying that black on black crime is a thing. I'm not saying that, but it is starting to be a problem that every week we see a rapper being killed by honestly yeah. ourselves. So my thing is, what do you think that we should do as a community to reduce the violence and still like push forward instead of black lives matter which we see the owner is buying houses and really not really helping out black people so what do you think we should do as a whole right okay let's peel back the layer of violence why is there violence let's look at it let's peel it back honestly why do we have that yeah honestly i do agree that white people did put us in situations like with the redlining and with the just disenfranchising black people that they put us in poverty. But also I don't think it's right for us as black people to kill each other. Like young Dolph, King Von, just so many rappers, just young rappers too. It's just like kind of sad that you don't see country musicians every week. Oh, Morgan Wallen has been shot and killed. Benny Chesney has been shot and killed. It's always us. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So why do you think they do it? And what does the community have to do with it? Honestly, I feel like we're putting too much effort into Black Lives Matter. Not the not the cause, like not the like not the saying, but the movement. I feel like we're giving them all the money, but we're not really putting money into stuff that should be put into, like the boys and girls clubs, like the after school programs. I feel like we're putting everything into Black Lives Matter and stuff like that. I feel like like you see what I'm trying to say? Like Black Lives Matter has too much control on the black community when like I said, no, they don't. I feel like they no, do. they don't. 
the organization has zero control over the black community, brother. In the media, they, they do though. In the media, the media doesn't really control the black community. The Black Lives Matter organization has zero input on what really goes on in black society. Zero. I mean, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Where are you getting that from, sir? Because they get lots of money. Am I lying? They get money from white people. But That's where they get that money. They get that money from white people. You understand that? I mean, honestly, I've never donated to them, so I really can't say, like, oh, black people. But I'm just saying, they are getting a lot of money, and they are a big vocal point for black people, just like these Democrats. No, they're not. No, they're not. No, no, they're they're not. They are. <laughs> How are they a vocal for black people? What What has Black Lives Matter done for black people? I like that's, what, that's why I'm asking you. I'm saying, what is black people can we do to strive away from the Black Lives Matter? Like, what can we do... What? You keep talking about Black Lives Matter. They're a non-factor in Black society, dude. The organization, Black Lives Matter, is a non-factor. But how is it a non-factor when we know that they like the protest was from Black Lives Matter? A lot of that was brought on no, by them. It. How is that? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. So who who started the who started all that? The protesting. Not the like, grassroots, the street started that, dude. The so street started. Matter, so they're just non-existent. What you're saying? So all the people dude, that we, all they did was put their name on it on TV. They didn't start anything, and that shows you ain't from the block, bro. Where are you from? Are you are you non-FBA? No, I'm FBA. I'm from Indianapolis. You from Minneapolis? So you should really Indianapolis. Know that. <laughs> Indianapolis. <laughs> Indianapolis, I said Minneapolis. Okay, Indianapolis. Okay. Yeah, like yeah, the Black Lives Matter organization, they didn't really get shit popping. When shit got popping on the streets, they'll just jump out in front of a camera and throw a Black Lives Matter t shirt out there, but they didn't get shit popping like that. Dude, when Black Lives Matter, so called Black Lives Matter, D Ray McKesson and all those dudes at the early protests, I'm talking about with Mike Brown and all that. They were getting run off the block, dude. My homies was out there smacking them the fuck up, dude. They weren't running nothing. Well, Stop watching TV and believing everything you see on TV, first of all. They weren't running anything, and they still don't run anything on the block. Black Lives Matter is just a catchphrase. That's all it is. It's a catchphrase that they throw on television. It's a brand name. But it's not a real organization. It's not. It's the, those three um, non-FBA and lesbian chicks who are the, the so-called figureheads of it. Don't nobody listen to them. They're not running anything. They work with white people. The, the energy of the streets got out here and got everything popping. They go out here and put a brand on it. They put their brand name on it and throw their, they get in the media and throw their donation site out there so that, hey, look, all these black people getting harmed donate to our black lives matter fund and then what happens that money goes to immigration and white lgbt organization funds and those three mammies who were the figureheads they get paid out they get cashed out and start buying homes for themselves but that ain't got nothing to do with the streets though you know we already knew the con game we we weren't even tripping on them we already knew what their get down was so they were always a non fact and right now they have to shut down their whole websites now because now the the feds are asking, hey, wh where's all that money going? Mm -hmm. So now they so they're they're in hot water right now. They have to shut down all of their donation sites. But we're not shocked. We know that was a they were finessing. You know that's what that is what it is. It has nothing to do with what's going on in the streets. So well, I'm saying to you, don't trip on Black Lives Matter, the organization. And again. You seem like you listen to too much of the media, not what real, not what's going on out in the street. You talking about rappers getting killed and all that? The fuck does that have to do with the black community? But that's important, though. Black community, as much as you might not admit it, hip hop is important. That is our culture, is it yes. not? It's our culture, but it's entertainment. And dudes getting killed. That has nothing to do with us as a group. There's going to be hating-ass niggas out here, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. 
there's gonna be hate niggas. That's just some hater nigga shit. You understand? Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. We, we as a collective, I don't have nothing to do with no hating ass nigga. What am, what are we gonna do about hate niggas? I guess my question is like, what do you think we should do as a whole? Like, in order to come together, come together and do what? Like I said, just to move forward instead of like I said, okay. even if you say it's hated nigga okay. shit, they're okay. still killing each other. They're still, sir. You're doing catchphrases. See, we got to watch these catchphrase catchphrases. We got to come together, come together to do what? To move forward, to move forward to do what? To stop the violence. How do we stop the violence? How are we responsible for the violence? You see, the black yeah, community, not res- the black community, is not responsible for the violence. Mm-hmm. I ain't got shit to do with no nigga shooting Young Dolph. Nothing. You have nothing to do with some dusty ass nigga shooting King Bond. Black folks, we got to get off this shit where every dusty thing that happens, we feel like we got to be responsible because white people told you you're responsible for every dusty fucking nigga. You ain't, black people. You ain't got to do shit about no dusty nigga killing somebody. There's killings in white society every day, all day. White people ain't responsible for that. They ignore it. It ain't got shit to do with me. Asian people, there's killings in Asian society. They have a whole Asian mafias, the Yakuza's, the triads. They have organized Asian crime. All Asian people don't sit up and, and, and identify crime with them as a group. We're the only people who are told to identify the criminal element to us as a whole group. That's dumb. You'll never stop crime in a capitalistic society. That's what I'm telling you. It's never going to stop black people. You live in a capitalistic society. The name of the game is to get your resources together and get enough control so that you can reduce it and contain that shit. But don't own it like that's a part of our culture, dusty niggas and criminality, because it is not. The average black person is not a criminal and we don't co-sign that shit. But whenever a crime or killing happens, we're told as black people, well, that's a that's something within your community that make you do that. No, it's not. It's just a dusty nigga doing a crime. We don't have to own up and embrace every dusty nigga. It's not our problem at all, because if somebody does something positive and constructive, we're not allowed to own that as a group. That person is treated like an anomaly, which they're not. We have so many brilliant people in black society. Do we have dusty niggas shooting each other a lot? Yeah, unfortunately. But that's not a part of black culture. Let's be very clear. Should it be reduced? Yes. And how do we reduce it? We reduce that by having an economic base that we control so that when one person comes up, there's not a bunch of jealous, dusty niggas hating from the sideline because they don't have the same opportunity. All of it goes back to resources and finances. We have to start controlling our resources and finances. We have to have an economic base. And how do we get an economic base? We got to go after the people and target the people and look at the people who sabotage our economic base, which are the white supremacists. It all boils back down to white supremacy. See, people want to put white supremacy on hold to tackle other shit as if white supremacy is not the problem. Yeah, I know there's white supremacy, but what about all this black on black crime? The black on black crime, the base of it is economic deprivation. That's the base of it. That's why most so-called black crime that we see happen in economically depressed areas or it happens by some dusty nigga who ain't got no paper like that or who's hating on another black person who's holding. It all goes back to economics, man. And our economic deprivation stems from systematic white supremacy. So we cannot ignore white supremacy. But anyway, man, thank you for the call, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. (sighs) Yeah, black folks, yeah, stop. I I really wish we stop um, internalizing dusty niggatry. We've got to stop doing that. Every time something dusty happens that becomes something that we have to internalize collectively. Like we got to, we have to explain why some other nigga is dusty. We got to explain why this hood rat is over here twerking, you know, 
Shit happens. Ain't got nothing to do with me. I want black folks to understand that. Dust ain't got shit to do with you. Ratchetness and dustiness nothing to do with you. The white supremacists put that label on us where every black person, if they do something ratchet, that means all of us should be punished as a group. That's that plantation shit. That's why we like, oh, we got to be on our P's and Q's. Don't, don't you be acting up. That's going to make us all look bad. It's that type of thing. See, that's why we got to get off the plantation. We got to get off that damn plantation. Let me get one more call. 